Okay, uh, good afternoon. Uh, first, uh, thanks for uh, the invitation for me to have a chance to attend this interesting conference. I think this is my first time to attend this uh, WOMP uh, conference. Hope in the future I can come here again. So today my talk may be a, a little bit more different compared to uh, the uh, gases here. Uh, I focus on the uh, single spin sensor inside the uh, diamond center. So uh, today my talk um, uh, talks uh, title will be sensing magnetic signal in the micro scale with single NV center sensors. I come from University of Science and Technology of China, and this city is located in Hefei. Okay, so uh, this is our, our city, uh, our university. We call it the University of Science and Technology of China. In China, we have the, uh, more than 30 universities named uh, Science and Technology University, but uh, this is only for China. So, um, also, uh, recent years, we can know about something about the satellite for the quantum, uh, for science. For example, for the uh, quantum, quantum information satellite or the dark matter satellite, um, both satellite is uh, our university is focused on uh, in this research. Okay, so uh, our lab is uh, recorded in the China Academy of Science, a uh, key laboratory of the macro scale magnetic resonance. So we focus on the spins, which could come from the gases, the uh, atoms, nuclear spins, or the, from the uh, electron spin or nuclear spins. And the technology for technology, we use the uh, um, electronic detection or optical detection or force detection in the lab. And uh, use these technologies uh, for these spins, we to do some quantum physics, quantum information, quantum meteorology, or sometimes we quantum simulations. So uh, before my talk, I will show also in our lab, we're beginning to do uh, some uh, atomic uh, magnetic mixtures. Uh, it is just beginning, I think it's two years ago. And uh, we focus on, recently we have two experiments. One is uh, cooperated with uh, a boudic. Uh, one is a zero to actual low field NMR. Another is a noble gases for, uh, for the maser. And if you are interested, you can, for this poster uh, 26, which is uh, uh, zero to actual low field NMR. And also, um, another uh, poster is for poster 41. And I think the Xinhua Peng, Professor Xinhua Peng is also here. Uh, Jia Ming, last night, I think you show his music dancing there. So I think he is stayed sometimes here. Uh, and he is now just to get his PhD degree in our lab uh, last, uh, this year. And uh, uh, so for my talk, I think I will focus on the background and the magnetic resonance and then the scale. And uh, I will show. Uh, two applications, one is for quantum physics, another is for the uh, actions searching. Okay, so as it is well known that the NMR or ESR is uh, familiar in the medicine, chemistry, biology, and energy, and uh, we call the MRI in the hospital. Uh, we, we can get some imaging of, the head, of, the, of your body or head or some basis, but for this, all these traditional methods is uh, transfer the spin uh, signals to the, uh, to the electronic in coil. Then you use the FID, you measure the spin. So you need to polarize the uh, spins and uh, make the magnetic field higher and higher and then get the sensitivity um, to get the signals. In, in this current uh, electronic method, the resolution is for about the um, uh, in theoretically, it is something like limited by one micrometers, and also the sensitivity sometimes is for the maybe 10 to 10 polarized spins, uh, nuclear spins in the lab. So uh, th th this uh, the resolution is limited by the principles, uh, by the gradient field and the thermal noise of spectrometer and the size of the sample. So uh, in our lab, we, we want to use MV center to to uh, to get the more sensitivity and more spe special resolutions. Um, so for example, we want to, if we can get the human brain's imaging, is it possible we can get imaging inside the cell? So this is why motivations, our motivations. Even we, we want to get a spectro, uh, spectroscopy and the imaging of a single molecule MRI. And uh, uh, what's the sensor we use? Uh, we didn't use uh, um, a coil here, we used the, the single spin sensors, electron spin sensors. 
uh, which is uh, uh, the nitrogen vacancy center inside the diamond. And uh, it has some amazing uh, feathers. The, the single spins, it is, high, uh, it is atom, atomic scale, so it could be high resolutions. And also, it should have something relatively coherence, long time, long coherence time. Then it could, get, you can measure long, longer times, and so you can get high sensitivities. And also, such experiment is performed in the, under the ambient conditions. That is to say, you just open air, you just room temperature, you can get the signals. So it's some body uh, application, for example, for the living cell or for the, uh, for the some. So here I just show the, the different principle you buy the electronic detection or optical detections here. The, uh, the, the sensor use traditional ESR or NMR, use a coil which is far away from the sample. The signal is related to the current in the coil and the sensitivity is, is related to this, uh, this equation and the, you can lower the temperature or in, improve the, the magnetic field, then you can get the uh, high sensitivities. But here, if you use a single spin sensor, it is closer to, to reach to the target spins, and the signal we use uh, these sensors to get the, the noise from this environment. And so, basic principle is that like, is the same as the OPM. That is to say, we just begin at the beginning, we first use optical pumping the, uh, the MV center. And it polarizes the electron spin, single electron spin uh, with, uh, f to the ground state. And in this ground state, if we uh, prepare initialize to the ground state, then we something like the Mahazen uh, meters here just uh, use the IF or micro, uh, microwave to prepare to the this spin to the superpositions, spin at a, up and spin down superpositions. If you reach to the tight spins, processing this. Uh, uh, this sensor and uh, with, with which interaction with the environment and it could have the, the phase factor here and here in the two uh, fringe. One is positive, one, another is negative. So another pi of two piles here, then compared to the initial, you have found the interference pattern here. And if you, the coherence time is longer enough, then you can have clearly to see the shift of the two interference patterns. And uh, uh, then you can um, then you can um, open the use the uh, red red laser to, to get the signal to read out the signals uh, of these interference patterns. So here the sensitivity is uh, related to his. Uh, if you measure the longer time t, then you can get the higher sensitivity. Another time is your efficiency of the eta here. And uh, so, however. The T is limited by the, the spin sensors, single spin sensors, quantum coherence time, T2 time. And if you use this, this which you, as, otherwise, it, it would be disappear the interference pattern, the visibility, visibility of the interference will from one to zero, disappear to zero. Okay. So, uh, because the time is short, I just show very quickly for the nanoscale. Uh, magnetic resonance for the uh, for the sensor. Here we I just just show for example, here we, in this experiment we cooperate with the Stuttgart uh, York uh, Rochefort group. We just measure the uh, the the nuclear spin hydrogen pro, uh, proton nuclear spins uh, uh, signals with inside the five nanometer size, and this is from uh, the. Uh, since this signals first time, you can the sensitivity could reach to, to the 100 nucleus spin uh, sensitivities, and the resolution, special resolution, is something like several nanometers size. And also, you can change the uh, the field. Then you can get the signal come from the which carbon nucleus spins is which which nucleus spins. It from the from the carbon from the hydrogen. So also. <laughs> We, we then in, in 2014, we use a single electron spin in in, in, in diamond. We measure the interaction between the two nuclear spins. The signal is very small. And the, the distance is something lovely to say is one nanometer away to carbon nuclear spins interaction here. And then we also get the information of this orientation uh, information. So use the MV sensor, your single, uh, single sensor of uh, in diamond, we can get the uh, vector informations. That is to say, we not 
we can uh, get some uh, 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 magnetic field of the its orientations information. And also, we get the ESR spectrum of a single proton. The single proton here is we have used we can use the uh, spins inside the proton, or we, we can use the spin labeled on the, on the proton's here. We, in our experiment, we use a single spin, a nitrogen oxide uh, spin label, to connect it with the one, uh, one proton, and, uh, and one single proton, and we use the sensor to measure the spectral, uh, spectroscopy of this uh, signals. So, so red dot here is disappear. Uh, clean on the surface, saying the signal disappear. If you didn't clean, you get a signal for this three peaks. And the three peaks come from the nitrogen oxide. This signature peak corresponding to the uh, resonance peak for the electron spin of the uh, uh, nitrogen oxide electron spin. And uh, this uh, uh, splitting of three nuclear spin, uh, three uh, peak, it come from the nitrogen 14 of the uh, nuclear informations. Spin informations, and also you can get some dynamical information based on this shape. So that is to say, the spin label is there is also have some dynamical information there. So um, in, in the in the previous experiment, we focused on the solid ESR, and here we use the uh, solution is liquid ESR experiment. Here we use the single DNA here, and uh, I didn't show the so uh, many details. So that is to say. We use, we use a chemical uh, bonding method to binding one uh, empty uh, DNA here, the red one, and another uh, with a si single spin uh, nitrogen oxide label in the another DNA, and inside the surface with solutions they can combine together, and then we can get the signal here. I will show some some experiment is here. So this this is if if you clean the sample, then so is the background signals here. And this is uh, use uh, 10 to 15 molecules experiment is like here, but here is a single uh, DNA experiment. Okay, so we also can get some uh, other uh, information of the chemistry. In the next, I will show some experiment of, of we use the uh, uh, MI in the single cell. And uh, here is we from the living cancer cell from the land. And then we, we set plate one single cell here, and we use a, a diamond knife. We can cut the separate cut uh, cut this cell, and then we mount it on the on the uh, scanner. And uh, up uh, in the downstairs here, we have the spin sensor uh, here, electron spin sensor. This is the setup, and uh, this is method. We use the T one method. Here is the result. We can get the imaging, and this size here is 600, uh, 100 nanometers here. This is the in situ spin imaging of the intra uh, secular proton in nanometer resolutions. We can get a signal like here. And the uh, resolution is 10 nanometers. And this is uh, we can the, the correlation imaging with TEM to, to check it is the right signal. Okay, so I, in the left uh, four minutes, I will show some to search for the actions and also observation of the pellet time symmetrical breaking. So that such sensor could also could be used to investigate some physics, uh, quantum physics. Okay, so for the, uh, the background, I didn't show too many background. I just to say the searching for new particles beyond the standard model is crucial for understanding several fundamental uh, conjugates such as dark matter, dark energy, and uh, and so on. And uh, it is predicted that, that uh, they have some uh, uh, spin independent macroscopic forces from new particle exchange. Also, sometimes people say it's the force, uh, the force force. And uh, in, uh, recently, we focus on the spin mass interactions and also the exotic uh, diaper up interactions. Uh, and uh, the experiment is. Uh, if you want to show, see some detail, could see these two paper, two reference. So advantages here, we use the atomic scale and the near surface thing could be a shorter force range. And also the precise quantum control, we could have good sensitivity. And we use combined the MV and the AFM to cancel the unwanted signals. So we just, just lifted this, uh, this silicon half ball here, you use a tuning fork. We just lift this, uh, uh, this uh, distance d, d0, and then we can uh, get some signals here. So 
originally this, we perform the area here. This is the existing experiment is this area, and we have the from the 10 to minus 4 to 10 to minus uh, 7, you can get some signals like here. This is here, and the dashed line is the theoretical uh, result. We use uh, um, the uh, extra type double couplings. We just use the setup of the experiment patterns. We use the uh, one laser to polarize electrical spins and use these spins to find the, is it, could it be, we can find some spin-spin interactions. Okay, so this is our experiment, and uh, this is this experiment, we have the more precise things. Okay, so if I have time, I think uh, I will show one minute to show quickly for the realization of PT Hamiltonian by the method. I think this is the, um, in Bender proposed uh, that a class of non hermit Hamiltonian satisfy PT symmetry can still use the, the real eigen energies. And uh, um, although this experiment is realized in the optical waveguides and electrical clusters and optical micro cavities and laser systems, uh, it is still in the classical systems. So in our experiment, we, uh, we realize the PT Hamiltonian in the dissipation systems. We use a single electrical spin and a neighboring nuclear spins as the environment. And then we form this Hamiltonian and the PT Hamiltonian and the user nuclear spin, the whole system is the pure systems. After you trace the system, okay, so this is the experiment. We can see the, we can see the uh, exception point and the, this is the PT symmetric and the unsymmetric. Okay, thanks for attention.